Welcome to The Wave. Today's Globe Offering supports Kits for Crisis, which supplies health, sewing, school, bedding, birthing, and cleaning kits for their most vulnerable people during times of crisis. They provide vital support for United Methodist Committee on Relief global development work and make a tangible difference in people's lives. We Play and Learn Child Care Center, located here at Water's Edge, is now enrolling children ages six weeks to four years old. We Play and Learn is open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. For enrollment information and to schedule a tour of the facility, please contact Kristen Putzke. Remember that next week we begin our new weekly worship schedule. Come to the blended worship service at 9 a.m. or the contemporary worship service at 11 a.m. For more information about worship services, go to h2oedge.org slash worship. Get your kids ready to embark on a vacation Bible school adventure that will light their way. Gear up for an over-the-top underground adventure in Cave Quest, a week-long VBS that grounds kids in the rock-solid foundation of God's love. Water's Edge VBS will be Monday, June 27th through Thursday, June 30th from 9 a.m. to noon. So mark your calendars now, and if you'd like to learn more about VBS and ways you can get involved, contact Children's Ministry Director Jennifer Fierro. The offering here at Water's Edge is not collected by plates passed through the rows. Instead, there are boxes in the rear of the worship center where you can give your offering. Envelopes are available if you need one. Also check out our online giving portal to give online. You may have noticed that the communion table is not in the worship center today. Today in our worship, we're focusing on our new life through the resurrection and how baptism gives us new life in Christ. So commune with your friends and family as you visit in the comments today. Okay, so let's recap for just a moment. Support today's Globe Offering for Kits for Crisis. Sign your child up for daycare at We Play and Learn Daycare Center by contacting Kristen Butsky. Remember that our new worship service schedule begins next Sunday. Contact Children's Ministry Director Jennifer Fierro for more information about this year's Vacation Bible School. If you have an offering, Feel free to drop it in the boxes in the rear of the worship center and take communion with your friends and family as you leave the worship center today. For more information about connecting into the Water's Edge community, check us out at h2oedge.org or on Facebook and may God take you to the edge.
Christ has led. Alleluia. Bowing our exalted head. Briefly, but we drove it away. I'm not sure we knew what we were getting ourselves into, but in the end, we brought this darkness upon ourselves. It became our home. Living in the dark can do funny things to a person. It turns the heart inward. You begin to wonder if there really ever was a light to begin with. Over the years, we tried to drive the darkness away, to bring the light back. But I suppose creating light was never really our job. And then one day, something peculiar happened. We woke up to a strange glow on the horizon, almost as if a great light was approaching. We weren't quite sure if it was real, to tell you the truth. 
but it was very real indeed. The sun had returned. Please be seated. Water. They say it's the stuff of life. On a hot day, it can be refreshing. They tell us, the scientists do, that life itself sprang from water. And without it, <clears throat> You and I are not very long for the world. Water is essential for life. And I believe on this day of the resurrection, water is essential too. There are um, four different ways the story is told in the Gospels. Each one of the Gospel writers puts their own unique twist on the story of Jesus' resurrection. Mark comes first. His is the briefest telling. He has some people show up and discover an empty tomb, and they go running off in fear. And really, that's about all they know. And you're kind of left hanging there, wondering what that's all about. Luke, he comes next. He takes Mark's story, and, and his focus, too, at least initially, seems to be on that same shock and wonderment about what is going on here and, and the fear that accompanies this empty tomb. But Luke was ever and always the one who told the stories of Jesus' great teachings, the parables. And he was always the one who focused on Jesus as healer and teacher. And so he shares a story about later in the day. A couple of Jesus' followers are heading to the nearby village of Emmaus, and Luke describes how a third person joins them, 
and explains to them all the meaning behind the life of Jesus. And they don't know who it is quite yet, but when they finally come to that place where they break the bread for the evening meal, they remember and know that Jesus is alive and in their midst. John has his own unique take on the story. Where Luke focused on the teachings, John comes along and he focuses on the relationship. He's the one who really puts the unique, strong emphasis on the women who come to the tomb and discover it empty. And you know the part, too, I suspect. You've heard it before about Mary who's grieving in the garden after everyone else is gone. And she sees a man there and she doesn't know who it is at first. She thinks it's the caretaker. And she asks, where have you put my master's body? And and when he speaks, she realizes who's with her. And she cries out, Rabbi, teacher, and discovers the power of the resurrection. And then there's Matthew. Matthew has components of all the rest in it. He, He sees, we see in him the relationship with the women. We also see the renewal of Jesus as the great teacher. But also he has his own unique take that he wants us to grab hold of. And so we're going to share now Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 15, the story of the first Easter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. And an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised, as he said. Come and see where he had laid. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been risen from the dead. And indeed he is going ahead of you to the Galilee, and there you will see him. This is my message to you. And so they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. And they ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, and they took hold of his feet, and they worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my disciples, my brothers, to go to the Galilee. There they will see me. And while they were going, some of the guards, they went into the city and to the chief priests, and they told them everything that had happened. And the priests had assembled with the elders, and they devised a plan to give them a large sum of money. And they said to them, You must say his disciples came in the night and they stole his body away while you were asleep. And if it comes to the governor's ear, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. And so they took the money and they did as they were directed. And this story has been told among the Jewish people and among many people even to this day. For Matthew, the story of the resurrection has three dramatic components to it. First, death is shattered. It is no more. Whatever whatever fears we have of death, There is a promise made in this action that its power and its hold over us cannot have any sway any longer because death has been conquered. The women come to the tomb. They're expecting 
to grieve a lost friend and teacher. And then the earth shakes. I was wondering if I'd knock down any of the set. An earthquake. Rocks sliding. Hillsides toppling over. The land heaved upward. New chasms forming. Things being shattered. That's what it means, this resurrection we're a part of. That everything that was has been shattered. That death itself can hold no sway. It is shattered and broken into a thousand pieces. Three days earlier, there is a cross with grief and pain and sorrow. And it is over. Life is yours. Each of yours. promise of the resurrection is the shattering of death and the life abundant for all of us. But that's not the whole promise. You know, for a lot of, a lot of us who are people of faith, we have a peculiar danger of a risk that we run in our journey as we try to grow with God. For some people, they come to that moment in their lives when they're baptized and either as an infant, somebody in their name proclaims they will be a follower of Jesus or as an adult or a a youth, they choose baptism and make that commitment. I was actually one of the, the youth who made that choice, wasn't baptized as an infant. And for those people who receive baptism, there's this, well, there's this little tendency to say, well, I've got the relationship, I'm locked in, I'm a follower, I'm good. And, you know, I think Easter kind of has, uh, has that dangerous way about it too, doesn't it? Jesus has come, death is shattered, there's the good news, I'm done, I'm covered. But that's not the whole story. This angel comes floating down. And he comes to rest on the giant stone that was so enormous it would have taken a troop of of guards to move it away. And there he sits all, all dressed in white like lightning flashing from the heavens. And what's his one message? Jesus goes before you. Go to the Galilee. Pick up and get moving. Head out. And there you will meet him. It's not a message of rest, is it? It's not time to kick back, rejoice, and celebrate and say, well, I've made it. No, it's time to pick up and move. Jesus is out there moving, and you got to go catch up to him. Do we see the message? Death is shattered. That's the good news. But that's not the end of the story. The story continues with what are we going to do with that news? Do we sit comfortably and relax? Or does the shattering of death remind us that we're called to head out, to go out there and share this good news? That there is living water And his name is Jesus. And that when you drink from his fountain, you will never thirst again. And you will be replenished and refreshed forever and ever and ever. The task before the followers of Jesus Christ is not to just simply remember this part of our lives but to take that part of our lives as a beginning point and see it as a purpose now for life. To go and shape the world out there in the Galilee the way we have been called to move. Death is shattered. 
And that good news is not the end that we can relax upon, but it is now a call leading us forward. And then finally this. Matthew's telling of this great story ends a little bit differently than all the rest. Did you catch that final scene about the guards? There had been guards at the tomb. They wanted to make sure nobody came and stole the body. They were aware of of that potential, and they wanted to make sure that sort of thing didn't happen. Well, the guards couldn't exactly stop earthquakes and angels, could they? And so now the guards come running back into the cities. And who do they find? Well, you know, in that time and in that place, it was the chief priests and the elders, which in our time and our place would simply be the people who are in positions of power and authority, the ones who love the status quo, who want things to remain as they are, and who don't want to hear disruptive tales about death being ended, about earthquakes happening, about things being shattered, and new possibilities for the people of God. Back then, they were called chief priests and elders. But we have our defenders of the status quo out there, too. People who hear the story and say, come on, do you really think that sort of thing actually happened? People who say, you know, I know that's your story, and I know it's important to you, but I've got my own story. Or others who simply say, do you really expect me to believe something that happened 2,000 years ago in some far-off country, somewhere halfway around the world, with a group of people in a different culture than mine? Do you really expect me to think that could be relevant to my life today? And it's our task to understand that we hold a message that the world doesn't quite get. And that when we proclaim it out there in the Galilee, as Jesus called it, as the angel called it, we might get some pushback. (laughs) We will get some pushback. And all the more reason why the proclamation must be made. Jesus is resurrected. And now it's our turn to do our part. And so I want to give you two opportunities today. We have our baptismal font here. And the waters are here. If you've been a person who was baptized at one point or another in your life, I want to invite you during some music at the end of this message to come forward. Touch the waters. Not to re-baptize, but to remember your baptism. To be thankful for what was done on your behalf by God. And to understand that just like the story of Easter, This water of baptism isn't the end, it's the beginning, and to reclaim that beginning in your life. To make a commitment to go out there and to serve in the name of Jesus Christ, to share in the name of Jesus Christ, and to tell in the name of Jesus Christ. So come to the waters Touch them and remember your baptism. And if you are one who was never baptized, come to the waters anyway. Use this as a first step to think about God. And then as you do this, I suspect you might realize something. That in the journey of life, well, you've probably allowed a lot of different things to get in the way of your relationship with God in Jesus Christ. Maybe it's been the job and you put so much energy into it that you've lost sight of that relationship. Maybe you've allowed broken relationships in your life to get you angry. And that anger is spilled over to God. Maybe there's some inner struggle. The one, you know what I'm talking about? The one you have 
that you don't want anyone else in the world to see and know about? Maybe that's been holding you back. After you touch the waters, I want you to feel free to just kind of pause up here for a time of prayer. And there's also power in knowing that there are others praying for you. And so right over here on the far side of that subwoofer and on the far side of this subwoofer, there's going to be two teams of people. They have been praying and preparing themselves for one purpose, to be ready for you. If you want to experience the, the power of someone praying for you, of asking God to lift that burden, of asking God to heal that relationship, of asking God to make you whole and make you a follower of Christ, then I want to invite you to come to the persons here and here. They'll stay with you as long as you need and they'll pray with you as long as you need. Death is shattered. The living water is among us and calls us to serve. Let us come forward in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen.
Oh uh-huh. 
things new, yes, you make all things new, and I will follow you forward. Sing it again, sing it again. You make all things new, yes, you make all things new, and I will follow you forward and now go forth and go forward out there where the word of life jesus christ the living water jesus christ is needed to be experienced and heard and in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ risen for all the world amen